Hi, I'm Patty Young with ModKit and today I'm going to show you a great little project I did with my Baby Lock Zeal machine, but you can make it with any machine you have at home. This is a quilted sunglass case that has this adorable herringbone pattern and it is so easy to sew. So let me show you how. I have all the supplies that you'll need to make this project right here in front of me. The first thing you'll need is scraps of fabric. That's the beauty of this project. You can make the whole thing with just small scraps. Literally no piece is bigger than four by seven inches. And you have all the dimensions in the class notes, so don't worry about jotting them down right now. You'll need three different prints to achieve the, uh, the herringbone design that you see right here. You'll need uh, some small pieces of quilt batting. You'll need a self-healing mat, a ruler, a rotary cutter, a marking pen, a turning tool. You'll definitely need an ironing board and iron set up just like I have it here next to your machine. This is crucial because you will go back and forth from sewing to ironing to sewing to ironing and you'll need a sewing machine, preferably with a quarter inch foot with guide just like this one. What I love about this foot is that it's got this nice little guide on the side that helps you achieve that perfect quarter inch seam allowance that you'll need for this project. But if you don't have this foot, don't worry about it. Any standard presser foot will do. So now's the fun part, let's get sewing. So the first step is to draw a vertical line down the center of your batting piece. We know that this batting piece is four inches wide, so I'm going to take my ruler and set it at the two inch mark, just like this. And we'll mark that center line. Don't worry if you don't have a fabric marker because this line will never show on your finished piece. And it's very important to have it perfectly centered because this is where you're going to line up the points of your herringbone design. So all of your little fabric pieces will be lined up right against this, the center line. So now we're gonna start sewing our herringbone pieces. The first thing you'll do is to take one of your color strips and line them up right sides together, just like this, short side against the long side. Once you have your strips right sides together like this, it's time to sew your first seam, line it up against that quarter inch seam guide and sew your first set of stitches. I'm just using a two and a half millimeter length on here and it's not necessary to back stitch at the beginning or end. Perfect. Now you'll want to iron that seam, press that seam down just like this. and line up the point of your first herringbone piece with that center mark and the top point at the very, very top of your batting piece, just like this. This is the one and only pen you will need for this project because after this step, everything's going to be pretty much sewn together so you won't really need a pin. But I like to put one here just so it doesn't move around. So the next step is to take your next color and line it up long side against the long side, right sides together, just like this. And then we're going to do our quarter inch seam along here. This is a quilt as you sew project, so everything will be quilted right onto the batting. So let's bring this over to the machine and do our quarter inch seam making sure that that point is perfectly lined up against uh, the line that you marked. Sometimes my batting gets stuck. There we go. Again, it's not necessary to backstitch on here. Beautiful, it's already starting to show that herringbone pattern. We can take, get rid of that pin for now and press this down. Right onto the batting. And then the next piece gets placed exactly how we did the very, very first piece. Short side against the long side just like this. 
right sides together, and then we're going to do our seam on this side. So we bring it into the sewing machine like this. I love it when it starts looking like herringbone already. Check it out. So beautiful. Then you can take your last color. We're going to be, this is a very repetitive process, but now you'll see why you need your ironing board right next to your machine because otherwise you'll be standing up and walking across your room like I did the first time before I got smart about it. Now we're going to line it up just like we did before and start the process all over again. So long side against long side, right sides together, bring it to the machine, line it up against that quarter inch guide, make sure those points are lined up. There you go. And my batting gets stuck again. Beautiful. Press it down. Line up your next piece, short side against the long side, right sides together. And let's take it over here and sew our quarter inch seam allowance. There we go. Let's press it down. So once you have the pattern down for the first three strips, everything else is going to come together. You guys have the hang of it. It's the same exact step all the way down and it's very repetitive but it's super fun to make and you guys this is Club Havana. This is my newest fabric collection for Riley Blake and isn't it fun flowers pineapples, dots, everything. So let's get started sewing the rest of this project so that we can uh, finish this up and then I can show you how to finish the sunglass case. And in no time at all, you have your full herringbone pattern in the front of your sunglass case. So now the next step is just to square it up. We're gonna flip it over and trim all the ends of the little strips of fabric. I use my ruler here so I get a nice straight edge because sometimes the batting, the batting uh, tends to stretch out a tiny bit when you're sewing it on. So I wanna make sure those edges are nice and straight. There we go. You can see it got a little stretched out here in the corner, so that's okay. We're gonna make it nice and straight. And the last side. Perfect. So now you see how the front of your sunglass case is going to look. Now it's time to quilt the back and then build the whole thing. It's going to be super easy to do. So now that you have your front piece all squared up, you won't need it for a little while. So it's okay to set it aside and now we're going to work on the back piece. 
So let's bring in your second piece of batting and your backing piece. We're going to layer them just like this and quilt it as desired. So what I've done on mine is since I have this nice geometric pattern on the back of my fabric, um, I'm just using the center of this geometric pattern to line up some quilting lines. Um, very simple, very modern. Um, that, that's the, the style of this case. But if you want something a little bit more traditional, you could do a different quilting method. You could do a meandering path. You could do whatever you want. So you just want that back piece nice and quilted. So if you were using the quarter inch foot with guide like I was for the piecing, now it's time to switch back to your standard presser foot for the quilting. This is what I've done here. So I am going to do my, my diagonal quilting on here. I'm just lining it up against the center of this geometric pattern. That's the beauty of this, these geometric patterns because you don't really have to measure anything. It's already measured out for you, so easy peasy. You've probably noticed that I'm not breaking my stitches at the end of each line. I'm just walking it along the edge. I'm stitching very, very close, like not even a 16th inch from the edge. And this helps keep the piece uh, anchored together. And it also keeps, keeps it from getting distorted. So your piece is fully quilted now and it's um, ready to be attached to the front. If you, have a, um, if, you, if you have a sewing business and you have some sort of tag or something that you like to add to your pieces, this is the right time to add it on here because the stitching will be hidden within the lining. So the next step you have to do is put your front and your back right sides together, just like this. If you want to pin or clip it together so it doesn't move, you can do that. Um, I've gotten to the point where I don't really pin or clip anything because these pieces don't really move around that much. And we're going to sew a quarter inch along the edge, leaving the top side open. So you got to make sure you do this right where the, the top um, point of your herringbone is in the opening, not backwards. I mean, unless you prefer it the other way, but this is the way it works as a herringbone. So lay these pieces right sides together and we're going to sew it along the edges. So I've not switched back to my quarter inch uh, with guide foot. I'm going to sew the step with my regular presser foot, but I've got this nice uh, quarter inch mark on the bobbin case cover and I'm going to line up the edge of my sunglass case with that marking right there. Pivot at the corners, just like I've done. Pivot again, making sure your edges are nice and lined up. I'm just back stitching at the end to make sure my stitches are secure. And the next thing I do is clip those corners so that when you turn it right side out, you don't get a lot of bulk in the, in the, in the corners there. So let's clip these as close as you can to the stitching without clipping through the stitching. Perfect. And now we just turn this piece right side out. I like to use a turning tool like the hemostat. This is the turn and more tool that I designed for Riley Blake. And it's great because I can clamp onto the edge like this and pull it.
Perfect. And then I can insert it back in and sort of push the, those corners out so they're nice and square. The next step is pretty easy. We're going to build the lining just like we did before, taking the last two pieces of fabric, put, placing them right sides together, and we're going to stitch along the outer edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, except on one side, either side, you're gonna leave about a two to three inch opening because that's where we're going to turn it. We can't turn it from the top because we're gonna be stitching it along the top later on. So we need an opening for turning. So we'll stitch it with a quarter inch seam allowance along three sides, clip the corners, leave it wrong side out just like this, and then I'll show you how to put the whole thing together. I'm back stitching at the beginning and end so that it, it'll reinforce the opening. And here's where I'm going to leave my gap. So I will back stitch a couple of stitches and forward stitch and then cut the thread. This does not have to be an exact measurement. You just eyeball it. So I'm eyeballing about two, two and a half inches uh, of a space right there. That's about right. And then continue sewing and then now you can sew all the way to the top, remembering to leave the top edge open. And remember also to backstitch right at this opening because otherwise those stitches might come undone. Back stitch at the top. So this is your lining. Now I'm going to trim the uh, the corners within the seam allowance. We will leave this piece wrong side out and insert the outer piece inside. So essentially they are right sides together once they're all the way in. Use your fingers to sort of um, push it all the way in till, till the openings are aligned at the top. You may, sometimes it's easier to sort of squish the outer piece like this, bend it. I also like to trim um, my thread tails at this step because I don't want them getting stuck in the, um, in the next step. So I'm almost there. Let's see, I've got so many thread tails. Let's just trim these up so that it's nice and clean. There we go. I'm gonna trim these two. And this one right here. There we go. So my outer edges are aligned at the opening here. And you also want to align those side seams. So there's my side seam right here. I want to align it with the side seam on the outer piece and then making sure that the other one is aligned as well. And I sort of use my fingers to press them open. And here's a little trick about the easiest way to sew this opening. You don't want to sew it since, since it's so tiny because literally this is about a three inch opening you're not gonna be able to fit it into the machine this way. So I like to sew it from the inside just like this. So essentially what I'm gonna do is put my presser foot right over the seam, and press it down with my presser foot. We're gonna sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance, just like that. And we're going to sort of rotate it Make sure you keep your fingers out of the way too. And, um, and that way it's easier to fit it in here without a whole lot of maneuvering. So let's get that edge sewn up. Backstitch at the beginning. 
I like to sew this step very slowly too because I want to make sure that that seam is perfectly straight and also um, I don't want to sew over my fingers <laughs> and when you got your fingers so close to your project like this it's very easy to do believe me so just go slow and steady rotating your piece carefully once you get close to that second side seam use your fingers to sort of um, open them like this there we go and another reason to sew slowly in this step is that you don't want to catch the other side of your piece as you're sewing so you have to sort of use one hand to push it out of the way and this hand to hold your the other end in place and you want to lift your presser foot put it back down beautiful yes there we go almost done we're nearing the other end where we started the stitching once you overlap then you can back stitch a few times just to make sure that seam is nice and reinforced so there I reached the, the beginning of my stitches and I'm just going to overlap them by oh, about, about a half an inch and then I'll back stitch great and this seam is finished again I like to clean all of my thread tails just to make sure nothing is stuck in there wonderful so we're going to use the opening on our lining to turn the entire case right side out so at this point I just like to use my fingers to sort of grab the inside of the case and pull it through the opening just like this it pulls very easily and at this point we're going to see the lining and the outer piece just like that so what I like to do is I like to clean up all my thread tails too just because I don't want them stuck in the seam for the next step and actually this looks pretty clean there's nothing oh here's a little one that I got it snip wonderful so we've got our lining and our outer piece and the next step is just to close up this opening so if you are very picky you can come in here and do some nice little hand stitches but to tell you the truth nobody will ever see the lining I'll show you one of my finished ones your sunglasses will go in there the stitching is all the way tucked in there nobody will ever see them so what I do is I just bring it I finger press the seam allowance towards the inside just like this about a quarter inch and I bring it onto the sewing machine and I just I just stitch it close very close to the edge like a sixteenth inch and it'll finish up nicely just like that you won't have an opening anymore so I'll, I'll just sew very close to the edge so that it's um so that it, get, it gets closed up without too much of a seam in there I'm going to back stitch. there it is so now I'll trim my thread tails as you can see I just sewed about a sixteenth inch from the edge and no one will ever see these stitches it's just one of my many time-saving measures <laughs> Oop. wonderful so now all we have to do is just insert the lining back into the main sunglass case so I like to use um, you can use your the same turning tool that you used before or you can just use a household chopstick this is one of my favorite tools I keep several of these around my uh, out around my sewing room I use the blunt end to sort of stuff the lining all the way till I feel it's all the way at the end it's so easy and then once I know the lining is all the way to the end then I use the pointier end to make sure the corners of the lining are all the way tucked in the corners of the outer piece you can sort of feel around to make sure the your chopstick is hitting that corner there it is so 
If you want, you could top stitch this edge, but I just find that it's um, with so many thicknesses because you're sewing through, gosh, four layers of fabric, four layers of batting. I mean, you're sewing through a lot. So um, I find that sometimes the stitching doesn't end up being quite as straight as I would like it to be. So what I do is I just use my fingers to make sure that that edge is perfectly lined up and then I just press it down and I leave it just like this. So you get a nice clean finish at the top of your sunglass case. It's beautiful. So our sunglass case is now finished. Isn't it cute? Adorable. And as you saw, this project is so fast and easy to sew that you can knock out a whole bunch of these in one afternoon. You can use them for teacher gifts, stocking stuffers, whatever you'd like. So my work here is done. And for more inspiring projects just like this one, check out the other videos on this site. You might even find something from me.